Ribnikov gasifier was trendy on the web a few years ago. I received hundreds of messages about it. Being under public pressure, I assembled and showed it in operation. Unfortunately, only part of the videos has survived, you can see them now. But browsing through patents on gasifiers, I came across two patents similar to Ribnikov's. Their common feature is top-down air supply through the air pipe in the middle of the hopper. Let me show you these patents and also a little bit of what the engineer Ribnikov, a World War II survivor, was working on. The possibility to supply air into the middle of a firebox was already known and practically implemented in the West. But local domes formed as a result of this method, so gasifiers of this type were not made small because it would be necessary to grind the fuel too finely. For obvious reasons, it is practically inconvenient because large pieces of wood would get stuck. Ribnikov himself did not patent this gasifier. But he did receive other patents. Let's see what his area of interest was. Ribnikov was a prolific engineer who delved deeply into the gasifier business. He actively studied Western developments, communicated with the other Soviet gasifier developers, and even made a prototype of the gasifier with a tuyer in the middle. Ribnikov has made the prototype, we are talking about, with Videnski, the author of the most comprehensible book on gasifiers for beginners. Ribnikov also wrote a series of articles in Motor Magazine and participated in writing a small book. Ribnikov was one of the first wave gasifier developers. Already in 1932, his experiments in selecting the most suitable firebox shape were in full swing in the power laboratory of the Mechanization of Agriculture Research Institute in Leningrad. He wrote about these experiments in Motor Magazine in 1937. Just a year later he created the notorious Ribnikov gasifier with a central air supply through a single tuyer. As I mentioned, Ribnikov developed it with engineer Videnski. The engineer tried to get away from Imbert's sandglass-shaped firebox, which had to be cast from a single piece of steel, with the aim to make something simple and reliable. Although the article says that Ribnikov's invention worked perfectly, this type of air supply practically led to fuel hang-ups, so it is indispensable on small gasifiers since it is impossible to pick up cheap fuel of the same size. Sometimes there are large chips with branches. Loading fuel of different sizes forms a dome under the tuyer. The author himself used small chunks 20 to 30 millimeters in size. In 1943, as proof of the inapplicability of this air supply method, Ribnikov proposed a completely different type of gasifier, a small gasifier for small several kilowatt gasoline generators. The developer again turned to the circular air supply through two years. Having survived the war, Ribnikov grasped onto the idea of fuel briquetting. On August 7, 1945, he filed a patent for purification of tart gas from a gasifier by passing it through a fuel fed to a briquetter. Gas was purified, fuel was heated and enriched with valuable tar, which glued the briquette well, simultaneously. In the same 1945, Ribnikov participated in writing a manual on converting engines to generator gas. On June 22, 1948, he received a patent for a mobile milled peat briquetter. On September 4, 1948, the inventor filed a patent for a roll straw presser for a gasifier hopper. Instead of crushing straw, this machine simply pulled it with its rolls into the hopper and presses it up, making the gasification process stable. To pay tribute to Ribnikov, I decided to support his idea with the central air supply and not let it die. Let's look at two patents which are sort of an improvement on Ribnikov and Videnski's idea of central air supply to the gasification zone. Ribnikov's idea may be developed by grateful descendants. Make your own contribution, please comment how you would develop a gasifier based on Ribnikov's invention and the following patents. Let's begin by patent filing dates. 1940 – A patent by engineer Gallen. The author decided to kill several birds with one stone to make a transport gasifier for wet, tarry, and ash fuel, peat, cones, wood chips, and twigs. Wood cubes give less tar than wood chips because of the fuel size. The gasifier firebox rotates on its axis on a ball bearing from a 12-volt motor, marked with the number 4. The air is supplied through rib tube 5. The ribs are washed by gas coming out from tube 6. This cools the gas and heats the incoming air. If you make pipe 5 with aluminum, the air will be heated 4 times better than if the pipe were iron. If you make a copper pipe, the air will be heated 5 times better. There is an ash outlet covered by plate 8 at the bottom of the firebox. Plate 8 is raised and lowered by a screw. Scraper 10 scrapes off the ash while the lower part rotates. Hatch 13 serves to discharge ash. Tap 14 serves to drain water and tar. When a vehicle is idling, valve 15 is opened and air is supplied to the gasifier through duct 18 for the engine not to stall. 
At the end of air pipe 5, there is a valve 19, so that the smoke does not come out when stopping. Gas pipe 6 has an outlet 20 with a valve that opens during stops. The air entering pipe 5 is heated by the exhaust gas with the aid of the ribs on the outside of the pipe. Air enters the firebox through tip 21. Finished gas, passing through the receiving tip 22, comes out, giving heat to the air in the fuel layer and losing much temperature. The most favorable parameters of the gasification process are achieved by adjusting the rotation speed of the gasifier's lower part. The zone is marked by the letter A at weak gasification, and by the letter B at strong. When tube 6 heats the fuel lying around it, the fuel releases moisture. It enters the gap between body 1 and hopper 2 and drains by gravity into ash pan 23. I can add from myself, apparently, there are holes in hopper 2, so it functions as a monorder. A flare is brought to plate 8 for ignition. It is not quite clear how the air and hot gas come out. The author writes through the tips. If you look at figure 2, you can see improvised beam-shaped tweers. Perhaps this is the air outlet. Nevertheless, nothing shown in figure 1 sticks out. I'll leave you with this mental exercise, speak up in the comments. Now let's move on to the second patent, filed a year later, in 1941, by Comrade Stadinitsyn. He decided to rotate not the gasifier lower part but a tube immersed in fuel with nozzles placed on its end. The nozzles also break the fuel layer equalizing combustion by area. Studenitsyn takes the gas out through spigot 10. It is possible to make a gas outlet as in the previous patent. For some reason, the walls are cooled with water, mark 7, though they should be insulated. Everything else is clear. Share your thoughts. See you.